In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to create this layout for your blog post. So this is a basic layout, but it's unique to you. This is the whole idea. You don't want to be creating your blog post layout, which look pretty much generic and look like everybody else's blog posts. So this is the title here, the date posted, and this is all using dynamic text. And then if I scroll down here, we have this beautiful featured image area. We have the title, the text, and also on the left here, it has uh, the author and also an email opt-in. So I show you step-by-step -step how to create this and uh, you can also use this in your existing websites. And once you create this template, it can be applied to your existing blog post or your future blog posts. Very easy to create. I show you step by step. But before I begin, I'd like to remind you that if you buy Divi using my affiliate link, you will get access to my web design formula course, the course that teaches you how to create professional looking websites with Divi. All right, so without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the very first thing we need to do here is to head over here to Divi and then click on Theme Builder. So we are going to build everything from scratch and this is where all the action happens. So as soon as we create our template here, it's going to be applied pretty much across the whole website on our blog post and also on the posts that are already on our website. So I'm gonna come over here and click on New Template and then I can choose what the template is going to be and it's definitely going to be for all our posts. And then I'm gonna click on Create Template. All right, so you can see here it says uh, all posts. So all I have to do now is to go in and create our custom body, which we're going to create from scratch, by the way. So we can decide whatever layout that we need as we are building this page. So everything is going to be built from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on start building. And uh, now I can go in and choose my column structure. So I'm gonna go with uh, one quarter, three quarters. Okay, it's because we just wanna add a little bit of information on the left side. And let's start here with a text module. So what we're gonna do here with this text module is we are going to um, add some dynamic text. So I'm gonna come over here and click on this little icon here, which is for our dynamic text. So here I'm going to choose my post publish date. So I'm gonna come over here and choose post publish date. And before I'm gonna say posted on colon space, and this is going to show our date. And then over here, we can also choose the date format. So you can choose whichever layout that you wanna go with here. So I'm gonna go with this one here and save. Now it takes a while for this to refresh and update. So anyway, while that is happening, I'm gonna come over here now to the right and add a text module. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for it and select it. Right, so here we're going to uh, also use our custom post type and this time it's gonna be our post title. So I'm gonna come over here and choose post title and then save. Next, I'm gonna add my image. So I'm gonna come over here and search for my image module and select it. And again, the image that we're going to use is going to be a featured image. So I'm gonna delete what I have here by default and then click on featured image. Okay, so now our image is going to go in there. That's looking great. Let's save that. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start adding the content of our blog post. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and search for post content. And here it is, post content. So whatever we're going to write in our blog post is going to be shown here. So what I usually do here is I go in and customize this and just give it the font that, that goes on with our website. So now that I've gone into my post content settings, I'm gonna click on design and then I'm gonna come over here to text. So I'm gonna change all my text here to my font and the font I'm gonna use is called Poppins. There we go. So now it has changed all the font across this area here. Next, I'm gonna to come to my text size and then in just increase this a little bit to about 16 and then also increase the uh, line height. Uh, in fact, we may need to go to about 17 here. And the line height looks okay, but we might need to nudge it one more time. Okay, so I think that looks better now. So over here on the post titles, on the headings, Again, I can go in here and make this bold. I can also increase the size here. Okay, so let's go with 38 for this. And then we can also go in and do this, uh, the heading two. Okay, so for this, we're gonna go with 30. Set this to bold and we're gonna do this for heading three. Now you can also go ahead and add heading four, five, and six, but to be honest, I rarely use four, five, and six. So I just usually end at heading three. All right, so now that I have all my text and my content all set up, I'm gonna save changes. And then I'm going to uh, now work on uh, this area here. So first of all, I need to remove 
my uh, padding here. So I'm going to come over here, click on design. And this is on my sections. So I'm going to click on spacing. And let me just set this to zero. There we go. Save that. Next, I am going to come over here to my row settings. I'm going to do the same thing. Click on design, spacing. And here I am going to, in fact, you know what? I need to go to sizing, not spacing. So the width here is going to be 100%. And I'm also going to do the same here. Set this to 100% for my maximum width. And then save. All right. So, so far, we've just added our dates, our title. And you know what? Our title here needs to be nice and bold as well. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to go in here and choose design, text. So here we're going to uh, make it all caps. And we're going to make it nice and big and give it a color as well. So the color here is going to be a light gray. So I'm going to go with that. Let's make this bold. Okay. And now we're going to increase the size. So our size here is going to be nice and big. And for our line height, I'm just going to reduce this a little bit. Okay. Let's go with 1.8. So while we're here, it's always good practice that you go in and set your sizes for the tablet and the phone as well, because as you can see, the tablet here doesn't look great. So we need to reduce our size here to say about 48. Okay, so that looks better. And let's set this to 1.7. Okay, you know what? I'm going to set it at 1 EM. <laughs> right, because sometimes you need to go in and play around with this. So 1.2, I think is fine. And now let's go to the phone view. And again, we can see here the phone is quite big. So let's set this to about 38. So now that I have this set to 38, I'm going to save this. Right. So what I usually do now at this stage is to test and see how things are looking like on our site. So I'm just going to open my URL here and then choose a post on my site. Okay. So now that I have my post set, all I have to do now is to save what I've done so far here. We're not done yet, by the way. We're going to come back in and make some adjustments as well. All right, so I'm going to close this and then save changes. So now that I've saved my changes, if I refresh this default blog, this should give us our new layout. And let's see what happens. And so far, this is what it looks like. So you can see here that we have the title. We don't have a featured image. That's why nothing is showing here. And this is our text. So... This gives me a good idea of layout wise, how things need to look. So of course, I'm going to go in now and adjust my width here because everything is not looking great. So I'm going to come back, go into my custom body here. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my section settings here, go into design and then go into spacing. So spacing wise here, I know I've reduced my padding here. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. So over here, it's not too bad, but if we want to now start making some adjustments, this is where now you can go in and really dial in our adjustments. And of course, on the left and right, I'm going to set this to 4 VW as well, so that everything is not all the way close to the edges. So now if I save this and save this again, let's see what happens now when we refresh. So as you can see here, I know it maybe looks it looks like I'm taking a long time to try and create this. That is because we really need to make sure it look, it's looking okay on all devices. And these are the tweaks that you need to make every now and again to see how things are looking. So as you can see now, we have a bit of height. Uh, I mean, padding here. This is looking great. And everything is not all the way to the edge here, which is good as well. Now, if I resize this, you can see that uh, things are looking pretty okay which is fantastic. All right. So now that I have this all set, I'm going to come back over here and I just want to uh, give this a color. So I'm going to go into my row settings and I'm going to go into the first column. So here we're going to give this a background color. So the background color is going to be a light gray. So let's go ahead and do that. But of course, you can use whatever color you want. You can even go with this yellow and then bring this slider all the way down here like that. But again, I'm just demonstrating what you can do here. This is all about your colors on your color palette and what looks nice on your site. OK, so now that I have this all set, I'm going to come over here to design and then I'm going to go into spacing. So here we're going to give this a padding uh, left and right. So let's give this two VW. OK, that's to the left and right. And then we're also going to do the same to the top and bottom. There we go. So I think that looks OK. 
Now that we have this, the next step is to head over here to the border and just give this about, uh, let's give this about six. I'm just gonna give this some rounded corners, okay? Right, so now that I have this all set, I can now save this, save it one more time. And I can continue now adding everything that I need to do in here. So first of all, before I add anything, I just wanna go in here and uh, just uh, adjust my text here. So I'm gonna come over here and make sure this is set to bold. There we go. And the size there is okay. Maybe I may want to bring it down a little bit to about 16. Okay, great. So I'm going to save this. So the next step now is to add another module. So this time the module I'm going to add is a, uh, let's try a blurb. So I'm going to select it. So now with my blurb selected, all I have to do now is to go in and make sure I add all the text that I need in here. So first of all, I'm going to delete all this like that. And then I'm going to come over here to my uh, title. So this is where the author goes. So I'm going to say post author. And then over here, I'm going to say written by. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Now let's go to our image and icon. And again, I'm going to delete this. And this is where I'm going to set my author profile picture. Right, so now I'm going to save this. So as you can see here, this is really taking shape. Now, what I may want to do here is to also go in and remove this background color here. Okay, next I'm gonna come over here to design and then I'm gonna to go to box shadow because I can see here we have a box shadow. So I've got rid of the box shadow. I've got rid of the, um, the background. So all I have to do now is just to customize this text here. And uh, I can see this is heading four. I don't really want it to be bold. I'm gonna make it semi bold. And then I'm gonna give this a line height. There we go. That's looking much better now. So here we can leave it as a square or we can have it as a circle if you want to. Now to do that, if you wanna have it as a circle, it's just to bump this all up, up to like a crazy high number. And this is gonna give us the, um, the circle. So I'm gonna go with the circle there. And uh, for this publish date, I can decide to maybe even drag it over here. So now we have the publish date and our title on this side. So we can also go ahead and continue to add even more items here if we need to, but we're gonna keep things simple here. And uh, now that I have this all set, I'm gonna save this page. And then back over here now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this post because right now, as you can see, it's missing quite a lot of things. It doesn't have a featured image and it doesn't have any text on it. So when we add the content that needs to go on our post, it needs to come over here in this area here in the Gutenberg editor. This should not be in the DV theme builder, okay? So you just have to make sure that it's added over here in the Gutenberg editor. Next over here now, it's time to add our featured image. So to add our featured image, make sure you're on the document here and then choose featured image. I'm gonna click here on set featured image. Now I'm sure, in fact, I do have some images here in my library, which is great. So the image I'm gonna go with is, uh, let's try this one here. I'm gonna click on set featured image, click on update. So right now things may look plain right here. So if I click on view post, you're gonna see now that the layout is going to be pretty much what we have in our builder. So as you can see, now this is uh, pretty much our design here. Now, if I had an image here, it'll be showing in here. So you may be thinking, okay, so why do we have this centered here? Well, that's a quick fix. This is pretty much from a previous tutorial. So I'm gonna go in here and show you where that is. So if I come over here to row settings, advanced, custom CSS, this is where we have it. So we can actually delete it from here and things won't be centered as they are. Back over here now, um, I can see that the color that I have here for this column does, doesn't look great. If you wanna get rid of it, you can always come over here, go into the column and just get rid of the background color just by coming over here. But if you want to keep the color, you can keep it and uh, even add more items over here. So let's add a few more things here just to populate our website. So I'm gonna save this. And then over here, I'm gonna add an email opt-in. So I'm just gonna come over here and search for uh, email opt-in. There we go. So we have our email opt-in now. So what I'm gonna do is to again, give this a background color. So I'm not gonna necessarily go with this. I'm gonna choose my own color here. And I like working with a gray because that's what really stands out here. I'm not really going in to uh, make a crazy design here. Okay, so there we go. 
So I have this all set now back over here on email account. This is where you want to make sure that you link up uh, your service provider uh, with Divi. And to do that, what you want to do is to click on add. So this is where you'd add your name and the API key for whatever email provider it is. In this case, this is MailChimp. So if I hit submit, this will now pretty much tie in and integrate my site with my email opt-in. All right, so with that, I'm just gonna come over here to fields. In fact, let me just cancel this. On the fields here, you can remove the fields that you don't need. So in most cases, you don't wanna collect the um, last name and sometimes even the first name, okay? So you just wanna keep it to the email and the subscribe button. So over here now, uh, we can also go in and play around with our text. So here we can add our main call to action. Pretty much why people want to uh, sign up on your mailing list. Over here on the description, usually I just get rid of this because I don't really need to add all of that. So this should be sufficient enough. And uh, for this example, I'm just going to copy some uh, dummy text from here and paste it in place like that. Oops, needs to go in here. There we go. So to further customize this, we can come over here to design and then we can go into the text. So making sure that uh, my text here is set to poppins. So I'm just going to make this uh, medium. And I'm also going to give this some rounded corners. So I'm going to come over here to border. Let's go with six. There we go. Save. Right. So now we have our email opt-in. We have the author. And now we have our content over here. So uh, you know what? Because we have uh, this as a rectangle, I'm just thinking I could just go in here and also add the border. So I'm gonna come over here, click on border, and my border is gonna go all around. And I'm just gonna set this to about two pixels and give this a color as well. So let's just uh, use a lighter gray and save. Okay, so pretty much this is our layout that we have now on our site. I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna close out of, here, out of this. Save it one more time. And now when we go to Hello World, if we refresh this page, here's what we have. So we have our email opt-in here and we also have uh, the person that has written this article. In this case, it's Mac Admin. Okay, so pretty much this is now our template for our blog post. So go ahead, try it out and uh, see how you come up with your own blog post layout templates. This is the best way to uh, make sure your blog post pages look really different and unique. And this can be achieved using the theme builder. All right, guys, that's all I have for you in today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also hit the thumbs up button. By doing so, it helps the channel and also you get notified when I release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.